is my best man. Now, for those who know him, he is on the theatrical side. <laughs> so, um, please bear in mind that he does tend to sort of exaggerate just for a bit of drama. So please take everything he says with a little bit of pinch of salt. Yeah, and try not to take everything as sheer truth. All right? So I'll hand you over to Chris. Thank you very much. Despite how theatrical you may think I am, I'm actually dead scared about making this speech. In fact, I was so scared I had to get some wise words of wisdom from my dad. Before making this speech, my dad said to me, don't worry Chris, just picture everybody naked. Which, to be honest, worked a treat when I looked over at the bride. But, in all honesty, made me feel a lot worse when I looked over at my dad. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, for, you, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Chris. I'm Richard's younger brother and best man. Thank you, Richard. Um, I'm very, look, very much looking forward to getting on with my speech, which I will be starting very shortly. <laughs> I will make you aware that I intend on using a projector and a screen throughout the duration of my speech. So uh, what I'm going to ask is if you guys could shift yourselves into a position where you can see this screen. And if uh, Tom and Will, you could both help me and get people into a position where they can see. Uh, I've just been informed by my brother that he forgot to give me my present. So, uh, here, yeah, this is me presenting my own present. Thank you, Rich. So, without further ado, I will get on with my speech. <laughs> if I could just find it. Hang on. Dad, can you check my, um, my, my jacket pocket, please, for my speech? No. Can, can you find it? No, where is it? Well, I gave it to you. Have you got my speech? No, sorry. R Rich, have you got my speech? Ah... <laughs> <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, rather embarrassing, but I think I may have left my speech at home. If you all just bear with me, I will be right back and uh, I will continue my speech from then. Uh, see you all in a minute. <laughs> Got enough fuel, Chris. Oh, we'll be alright, don't worry, don't worry. You filming? Yeah, camera's rolling. Hi everybody, can you all hear me? Yeah. Hi Rich, hi Emily. I'm just on my way home at the moment. I think I know where I left this speech, so uh, everything's under control. Are you the best man at your brother's wedding? Have you forgotten your speech and are now on the way home to find it? Hey, that's me! <laughs> well, there's no saving you now, you idiot. You've ruined the day for your brother, his bride, and the entire family. Good luck. Is your Now, while I make my way back home to find my speech, I'm going to pass you over to Emily's best friend, Megan, who unfortunately can't be there today. Which makes two of us. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful time. If, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Megan, and I've had the honour of growing up with the now Mrs. Emily Reed. The mother of the bride has kindly asked me to say a few words, because as you can see, I'm on my medical elective in the Solomon Islands. My first memory of Em was when we were both four years old and she came round for a sleepover and gave me chicken pox. Great first impression, thanks very much Emily, but I think you've made up for it over the years. 
I can't quite believe that my beautiful, insanely intelligent, slightly ridiculous best friend is getting married and is now Miss Emily, Mrs. Emily Alice Reed, or Mrs. Ear. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> All through our teens, as girls do, we planned and thought about our wedding days. And as you can see here, Emily went, went, went so far <laughs> as to design her own wedding dress. <laughs> I've always said to Em that she would look beautiful in a bin bag, so I'm sure right now she looks stunning. Another thing which Emily designed, age 14, was her perfect man, which she actually drew a rather detailed drawing, drawing of. So I would like you all to do me the honour of looking at the groom and comparing him to Emily, age 14, I, her ideal man. So uh, please allow me to read out some of the annotation around the sides. First of all, his name is Guy Lee Scott, so that's not a good start, Rich. So Guy has short, curly, slash spiky brown hair. He has a matte face and does not wear makeup. Check, I hope. He would do anything for me, but he is not too soppy. Guy buys me chocolates and flowers just for being me. Guy is protective over me, and although he has many friends, he would never, in capital letters, even look at another girl in the way he looks at me. He is very sexy, and is not too embarrassed to hug and kiss me in public. He has a muscly yet gentle figure, and is very, very well proportioned. Guy and I are best friends, and he always looks after me really well. And finally, Guy has gorgeous legs. So I don't know whether you match up, up to that, that rich, but um, I'm sure you're that and more. There are a few things um, that I'd like to say to Rich as well as you start your married life with Emily. A few things which you probably do know already, but I just need to make sure. Firstly, she's a daddy's girl. She always has been, and now you're the one looking after her. You have some big shoes to fill. Secondly, Emily is headstrong and spontaneous and always manages to get into trouble. I know growing up that Graham and Jenny used to think that it was me that got her into dangerous situations. However, I'd like to say now that it was definitely the other way around and I was a near victim. <laughs> Thirdly, she hates butter and chocolate raisins and she loves drinking herbal teas of all varieties and she uh, loves all things Thai, as you can probably see around you. Fourthly, she will make you laugh and bring you so much joy. I can tell you that because there was this time in history where I had to leave the classroom feigning an asthma attack because she'd made me laugh so hard I could hardly breathe. And finally, one thing I really admire about Em is how much she loves God and I'm really excited um, to see what God's plan is for, for you as a couple and just watch it unfold really over the, the years of your marriage. Um, Emily, I'm heartbroken that I can't be here to um, see you on your wedding day, but I'd like to just leave you with one final image. Peace out! I know I left that speech somewhere. Mm. Now, to say that it was love at first sight between Richard and Emily may be stretching it just a tad. After all, this is what Richard looked like when they first met. <laughs> I like to refer to this as Richard's Rambo days. Long tied back hair, big muscles with a sprinkling of jewellery. Kind of a girly Mr. T, you might think. <laughs> it took a couple of months before Rich finally plucked up the courage to ask Emily out on a date. Hey Emily, do you fancy going out for a drink after work? To which she responded with a blunt yet fair response, no. <laughs> Being the determined individual that my brother is, Rich quickly responded with, 
Do you want to go out for coffee to discuss why you don't want to go out for a drink? Now, you may notice from Richard's appearance today that he's indeed a changed man. I suspect Emily refused to be seen in public with a man wearing more jewellery than her. His hair is trimmed, his jewellery is gone, with the exception of that new ring, of course. And each morning he looks in the mirror, wondering where his well-earned muscles went. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> Where's that speech? Come on, it's got to be here somewhere. Come on, come on, oh! Now, it's probably fair to say that things didn't shift again romantically until Emily's 21st birthday party. At this point, Richard and Emily were still trying to figure out whether they were just work colleagues or maybe something more. To everybody else in the office, however, the writing was already on the wall. <laughs> anyway, Emily's 21st birthday party. It had quickly been noted that Richard had arrived at the party before anybody else mooching, sauntering, and lurking with intent at one end of the garden. <laughs> now, you have to remember that this was a work colleague of his. I think it's probably fair to say that most of us would arrive just a little late to make sure that plenty of other people had arrived well before us. <laughs> but no, there Rich was, on his own, with Emily, both of them dressed to the nines. With hindsight, there must have been some sort of code of silence between the two of them, because once all the other guests started arriving, Richard and Emily both proceeded to ignore each other the entire evening. It wasn't until the end of the night where Richard decided to make his move by hanging around afterwards, waiting for all the other guests to clear off. Now, this is where, so legend has it, we're led to believe where the first snog happened. Yeah, I remember it well. I was there. Not watching them snog, of course. I'm not into that sort of thing at all. But I was there, telling Richard to hurry up and drive us both home. <laughs> to which Richard replied, Shut up. Go sit in the car. I'm busy. <laughs> and so, Rich strolled into work the next day, confessing that him and Emily had finally become a couple. Much to the relief, but certainly not surprised to their fellow colleagues. where this speech could be. Well, it's pretty important that you find it, Chris. Just remember where you might have left it. <laughs> ah! Find it! <laughs> hey! What have you got there? Was you, eh? Was you? Oh. We just uh, practice this speech, then, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Please be upstanding for the bride and groom. The, the, the bride and groom. The bride and groom. Oh, oh have you just hit something? What's wrong with the car? Oh, quick. Pull in over here. Brilliant. Well done. Out of fuel. What are we going to do now? The whole thing's just gone to pot. Just let me think. Let me think. Well, we haven't got time to think, really, Chris. You've run out of fuel, and we're just in the middle of nowhere. Right, get out of the car. What? Get out of the car! Oh, I've got an idea. Right, just stay here, watch the car. I'm going to go find help. I've had it up to here! With you, you mechanical cretin! Unit 
Sorry, we have reports of a tall Caucasian male vandalising a car in your immediate vicinity. Could you please investigate? Copy that, Alpha 4. We see them. We are approaching them now. Excuse me, sir. Is this your car, sir? Do you want to tell me why you're beating a car, sir? No, you don't get it. Put the stick down, sir. Can you turn the face of the bonnet, sir? No, you don't get it. It's my face of the bonnet, sir. What are you doing? I'm the best man! Jenkins, cuff him. Right, get him in the back. Hey, come on. Excuse me, sir. Why are you filming, sir? Um, we we we're Is this your camera, sir? Yes. Sir, I'm going to ask you to put the camera down, sir. Um, well, Can you put the camera down, I please, sir? No sir, if you don't put the camera down, I will have to take action against you, sir. <laughs> sir, put the camera down. This is your last warning, sir. No, I'm well right, that's it. <laughs> sir, you are being tasered. <laughs> Do not resist. <laughs> you just like to come with me, sir? Just get back in the car for me. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? Look, this is a misunderstanding. I've got to do it. down the station, sir. What? I can't go to prison. Hey, look, look, there's a misunderstanding. I'm Alpha 4, this is Unit 3. We have detained the suspects. We're on the way down to the station now. I'm, Over. The, I'm the best man! Seatbelt, sir. Oh, great. What am I going to do now? Chris, everyone's watching. Just say something to the camera. Rich, I just want to say that I've always looked up to you. Even though I'm three inches taller. <laughs> I may be your best man today, but we both know that you really are the best of men and that Emily couldn't have married a better guy. I know that we've had our brotherly squabbles over the years, but I just want to say that you really do mean a lot to me, Rich. Emily, I just want to say how amazing you are. I'm so grateful that my brother was able to marry such a kind and beautiful girl. I know that the two of you are going to have a wonderful life together and have some pretty adorable children. Sorry that I messed up my speech and that I can't be there. But I just want to say that I love you both and congratulations. <laughs> oh, Jenkins, what is wrong with you? Show a bit of professionalism, please. Sorry. That was beautiful. Look, will you stop crying? You're a police officer. Okay, just maybe we can just let him off just like this. Well, let him off. Mate, he's a criminal. He's going down to the station. I know, but we're. But what about Richard and Emily? <laughs> what? Look, right, how's this? We take him back to the wedding, he does his speech, and then straight after, we take him down the station and you stop crying. Alright? That sounds good. Right. You're going, man, you're going to the wedding. Right, let's go, Jenkins. Mind your head, son. Mind your head. There we go. Right, now remember what I said to you in the car. You get in there, you do your speech, and you get right back out again, alright? No yeah. faffing about. Gotcha. gotcha. Right. Okay, and remember, just relax, alright? Don't worry, everyone's gonna love it. Thanks. <laughs> whoa, 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 stop. stop. <laughs> Jenkins, what are you playing at? I saw him as tight. He's the best man. Yeah, but you're doing it all wrong, aren't you? So come it. You've done it too tight. Let's loosen it off and let's start again, alright? Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely not tight enough. You have to have a certain way. For Jenkins, certain I'm telling you, you're doing it all wrong. Look, there guys, can go. I just go and do And whatever you do, don't start crying. You all look like a total wally if you do, all right? Chris, your brother's going to like it. Thanks, Jenkins. <laughs> you're all right, you are. Yeah? Oh, yeah. thank you very much. I've oi, oi. Never really got the... What have I told you? Turn that camera off. Jenkins, could you just get my speech out? Yeah. Please, it's my pocket. Thanks. Excuse me, Sam, thank you. <laughs> right. Go. right, so here we go. <clears throat> yep. Rich, thank you for the gift of being your best man. It's an honour and privilege and I've done all that I can. I wish you the most for the start of your life. Now that you have set sail with your newly wed wife, <laughs> I give to you but a few words of advice. 
Give her what she wants, regardless of price. <laughs> Emily Reed. It goes without saying how gorgeous you are. You look like a princess played by a top movie star. <laughs> She's funny, considerate, generous and kind. Good job Ridge married her before changing her mind. <laughs> She's totally switched on, and that's a fact. I guess it's true that opposites really do attract. <laughs> Emily, I give to you but one thing to remember. Your parents want a grandchild no later than December. <laughs> of next year, of course, for those of you that have done the math. <laughs> Bridesmaids, I'd like to mention how stunning you all are. You are what men dream of when they wish upon a star. <laughs> oh. I say this with truth and with jokes put aside. You are all so beautiful and only second to the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the bridesmaids. <laughs> Richard, Emily, getting married is a glorious day. To express your love and for Rich to prove he's not gay. <laughs> but here you are, now married to each other. And never have I been such a proud little brother. Come on, Come on. Come on. So, 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 ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glass with a sense of speed to the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Reed. I want you lot all sitting down, don't want no trouble from any, any one of you tonight, alright? Sit down, shut up, he's going down the station. Thank you very much, let's go. But wait, hey, it's my friend, this is nice, 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 come on. Come on. Come on. And can I just say, have a wonderful evening. Thank you, let's go.